Greetings to all grade 10 students and welcome to Bamboo Teleskwela. This is your school on air in Science 10. I am your teacher, Sir Julius M. Raquel. Make sure to grab your modules with you and tune in to DWNDFM and CMT Cable Channel 11. We are also streaming live at SDO Kawayan City Facebook page. Please prepare also your notebook and pen for you to chat down all the needed information with regards to our lesson for today. We are really delighted to have you for another fun and exciting discussion about science. Yes, you heard it right! Science is fun and exciting. So fasten your seatbelt, let's explore and learn together. For the past weeks, the relationship between the different geologic features as well as the different types of plate boundaries was tackled and discussed to you. In the first week of classes, you have learned that the Earth's outer crust or the lithosphere is composed of a series of tectonic plates that move on a hot flowing mantle layer called the asthenosphere. The movements of the lithospheric plates of the Earth can be classified into three types of plate boundaries, namely the convergent plate boundary, the divergent plate boundary, and the transform fault plate boundary. Along the plate margins, earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain ranges are being formed. But what other geologic activities may be formed in the different plate boundaries? What will happen when two different plate boundaries collide, pull apart, and grind? Why do we need to study these different geologic processes? Let's find out in today's lesson. This lesson is a continuation of the previous one which deals with the processes that occur along plate boundaries. In this lesson, we will study thoroughly the different processes taking place at a divergent plate boundary and transform fault plate boundary, where and why they take place and their effects. Today, we are going to discuss processes that occur along plate boundaries. We are expecting that after this lesson, you will be able to first, explain the different processes that occur along divergent plate boundary and transform fault boundary. And second, name the landforms produced in this type of plate boundaries. Our lesson for today revolves around this question. Kindly take them down and later on after the discussion, we will answer it. Why there is existence of different geologic processes along the plate boundaries? It's good to start the lesson by familiarizing ourselves with the terms that we might encounter throughout the discussion. Let's then start by knowing the definition of each word or term. The first word is plate boundary. This is also known as plate margin. The boundary of one of the plates that form the upper layer or the lithosphere and together cover the surface of the earth. The second word is divergent plate boundary. It is also known as constructive boundary. It is two or more plates that move apart from each other because of plate tectonics. The next word is transform plate boundary. These are locations where two plates slide past one another. Another word is lithospheric plate. These are regions of Earth's crust and the upper mantle that are fractured into plates that move across a deeper plasticine mantle. Another word is rift valley. It is an elongate trough of regional extent bounded by two or more folds. Next word is tension zone. Transitional zone between two distinctive zones. The zones may be influenced by climatic factors 
or geological variation, creating a floristic tension zone. Next word is oceanic ridges. Any section of the narrow, largely continuous range of submarine mountains that extends into all the major oceans and at which new oceanic lithosphere is created by the rise of magma from the Earth's interior. And the last word is subduction. It is the process by which collision of Earth's crustal plates results in one plate being thrown down or overridden by another, localized along the juncture or subduction zone of two plates. Do you still remember the two different types of crust? The crust has two different types, the oceanic crust and the continental crust. Remember that the oceanic crust is thinner but denser than the continental crust, while the continental crust is thicker but less dense compared to the oceanic crust. This idea about crust is very important for us to further understand the geologic processes that occurring along the different types of plate boundaries. You have previously learned that the convection current in the Earth's mantle caused the crust to break into smaller segments. Spaces in between or plate boundaries are created. These plate boundaries are named according to the relative movement of the plates with each other. Do you still remember the three types of plate boundaries? The three different types of plate boundaries are the convergent plate boundary, divergent plate boundary, and transform plate boundary. In a convergent boundary, plates meet or converge. A divergent boundary, in here, plates separate or move away or diverge. And boundaries slide past each other represents a transform fault boundary. In the discussion in the previous week, you have learned about the three types of convergent plate boundaries. In convergent boundary, the lithospheric plates are moving towards each other, where one leading edge of a plate is subducted and turned into magma. Just like in the convergence of oceanic and continental crustal plates, that gives rise in the formation of trenches, volcanic arc, and earthquakes. Another is in the convergence of two oceanic crustal plates, which leads to the formation of trenches, volcanic island arc, and strong earthquakes that can generate tsunamis like what happened in Japan in the year 2011. In the last type of convergent plate boundary, where two continental crustal plates collide, there is no subduction zone. Therefore, there are no formation of volcanoes, but rather, a collision zone happens that leads to the formation of mountain ranges and shallow earthquakes. Now, for today's lesson, we will start with the processes that occur on divergent plate boundaries. Divergent plate boundary occurs when the lithospheric plates are moving apart from each other. Divergent plate boundaries mostly happen under the oceans. If the divergent movements happens in the oceanic plates, it can lead to the formation of oceanic ridge and rift valley. What are oceanic ridge and drift valley? How are they formed? Oceanic ridge is an underwater mountain range formed by plate tectonics. These oceanic ridge occurs when the convection currents rise in the mantle beneath the oceanic crust and create magma where two tectonic plates meet at a divergent boundary. As plates continue to move apart, an uplifted ocean floor will develop in both sides of the plates, which is called oceanic ridge. 
plate divergence is believed to be a slow continuous process. As the plates move away, the gap between them increases. While this happens, materials from the mantle may rise, filling up the space. These materials pile up near the tension zone, forming mountain-like structures which is the oceanic ridge. But new materials from the mantle may push the old ones. The filled-up space between the plates become a new seafloor. This process is also known as the seafloor spreading. Since I have mentioned earlier that the oceanic crust is thinner than the continental crust, the creation of linear shaped lowland between oceanic ridges will develop, and this geologic feature is called the Reef Valley. As plates pull away from each other, a vertical space which may extend deep down into the lowest layer of the crust is created. The force of separation creates a tension zone. A shallow earthquake may happen with this plate movement. Did you know that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a mid-ocean ridge that is located along the floor of Atlantic Ocean and the part of the longest mountain range in the world? Did you know also that rocks near the oceanic ridge is younger than those far from it? This map tells the age of the Earth's oceanic rocks in million years. Red means youngest oceanic rocks and blue means the oldest. It is very clear that rocks near the oceanic ridge is younger than those far from it. That is the reason why divergent plate boundary is also known as constructive plate margins because it is where new materials are being formed. Divergent plate movement can also occur in continental plates. As continental plate starts to move apart, the crust will start thinning and develops continental reef valley. The continental valley will develop into a narrow sea and later on into a wide ocean. One example of a country which is diverging from one another is the Iceland. Iceland is a country located above the Eurasian Plate and the American Plate that are diverging from one another. That is why there are sceneries which tourists enjoy to visit in this country. And one of the most frequently visited tourist attraction in Iceland is the Thingfiller National Park. Have you tried eating a half-cooked egg? As you cut open the white part with your spoon, what comes out of the cooked part? Yes, it is the half-cooked egg yolk. Divergence of plates is somewhat similar to a splitting open egg. As it opens, the half-cooked egg yolk gradually flows out. When it cools down, it becomes solid. And now, let's proceed to the processes and landforms that occur along the transform fault boundary. A transform fault plate boundary is a margin between two lithospheric plates that constitutes a regional scale transform fault. The fracture zone that forms a transform plate boundary is known as transform fault. Most transform faults are found in ocean basins and connect offsets in the mid-ocean reaches. Let's examine the simulation above. If the black represents the lithospheric plates, you will notice that there were two sets of divergent plate boundaries between blocks 1 and 2 and between blocks 3 and 4. But since the plates were adjacent to each other, a new type of boundary is manifested and that is the transform fault boundary. 
It can be seen between blocks 2 and 3. The presence of oceanic ridge is an indication of diverging plates, and as the plates diverge between the two segments of the mid-ocean ridge, the adjacent slabs of crust are grinding past each other, forming transform fall. Transform boundaries and the resulting force produce many earthquakes because edges of tectonic plates are jagged rather than smooth. As the plates grind past each other, the jagged edges strike each other, catch and stick, locking the plates in place for a time. Because the plates are locked together without moving, a lot of stress builds up at a fault line. This stress releases in quick bursts when the plates suddenly slip into new positions. The sudden movement is what we feel as the shaking and trembling of an earthquake. Most transform faults are located within ocean basins, but there are a smaller number of transform faults that cuts through continental crust. The most famous example of this is San Andreas Fault Zone of Western North America. In the beginning of the discussion, I have presented the question that served as our guide for the lesson. Now, let's take a look again and answer it. Why there is the existence of different geologic processes along the plate boundaries? Each type of plate boundary generates distinct geologic processes and landforms. In much the same way that geographic borders have separated, collided, and been redrawn throughout human history, tectonic plate boundaries have diverged, converged, and reshaped the Earth throughout its geologic history. Today, science has shown the surface of Earth is in a constant state of change. We are able to observe and measure mountains rising and eroding, oceans expanding and shrinking, volcanoes erupting and earthquakes striking. That is why it is very significant. And now, let's have the rundown of the points to be remembered a while ago in the discussion. Divergent plate boundary happens when plates move apart from each other, forming mid-oceanic ridges, reef valleys, and shallow earthquakes. Transform fault plate boundary is a fault along a plate boundary where the motion is predominantly horizontal. No leading edge of plate is being destroyed. This means that no volcanoes and no mountains are formed but rather earthquakes. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you understand all what we have tackled this day. You can now go over with your Module 3 in Science 10 and answer the activities on pages 2 to 19. If you have questions with regards to our lesson, you can simply approach your science teacher in your respective schools. It has been a great day of learning and discovery that even COVID-19 cannot stop. Remember that education must continue amid the crisis. This has been Teacher Julius M. Raquel for Bamboo Telescuela, bringing education in the comfort of your home. Good day, keep safe, and God bless.